stress and find more joy. I'm your host, Colleen Pilar, and I'm thrilled you're here with us today. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on your favorite app so that you won't miss a single episode. This episode is brought to you by our free community, the Circle of Resilient and Thriving Pet Professionals. If you like the ideas shared here, then you're invited to continue the conversation with other lifelong learners in the community. You can find out more at ColleenPilar.com. It's the perfect place for you to learn cool stuff, feel good, and take action to create the life you love. Come join us. Judgment requires comparison, but comparison does not require judgment. In several recent coaching calls, the concept of compare and despair came up. These amazing, talented, accomplished pet professionals told me that while scrolling through social media, they feel inept, less competent, and less professional than their peers. They get weighed down by ideas of what they should be doing. It's exhausting, mentally and physically. The compare and despair cycle leaves you less likely to make changes that stick, less able to set priorities and stick with them, and less able to focus on what really matters to you. Comparison is a natural and necessary brain function. It helps us make important distinctions. Comparison is wonderful until it's not. It's always looking for safe versus unsafe experiences. Comparison is a quick way to absorb information and it aids decision making. Often, comparison leads to judgment. Judgment is another necessary brain function, but we tend to overuse it a lot. When possible, it's really helpful for the idea of which is better to be a very light, easy belief, something that's based on circumstances or need, not a rigid kind of dogma. So I'd like to propose an experiment here. I want to ask you a series of questions about one of your friends. With each question, take a moment to just mentally answer the question and then check to see if you had any physical or emotional response to the question. If so, just take note of what you experienced. Okay, ready? Here come the questions about your friend. Which one of you is taller? Who has longer hair? Who has more siblings? Who wears brighter clothing? Who has better communication skills? Who is more physically fit? Who earns more money? Who is better at their job? It's okay to compare. In fact, it's essential. It's a basic brain function, and you really can't stop your brain from doing it. But the key element to prevent comparison from triggering a negative compare and despair cycle is to notice the stories and values that are getting triggered by the comparison. It's common for questions about money, fitness, and skill to spark emotional responses. Did you notice that with any of the questions that I asked? These questions can be problematic because we often hold a view about what is right or best. And then by asking the question, it's sort of asking you to compare on a scale of goodness. And that can make you feel better or worse, depending on how the answer comes out. But here's the thing. Your brain added that layer of judgment to the question. I simply asked a question. Who is taller Did you have an emotional response to that one? Usually not. In this case, you're able to compare without judgment. You're just looking at what is without adding any extra meaning to it. So it's important for us to notice that a question like, which one of you is taller, can seem very neutral. 
and who is more physically fit can feel very loaded. The difference between these two is entirely in your brain and how you are assessing the question. So many of my clients tell me that social media is the place where they are most likely to fall into compare and despair. They see other pet pros celebrating their clients' successes or posting pictures of outings they take with their own dogs or sharing stories about the amazing meal they just made or, you know, putting up photos of the lovely craft they just completed. And then they compare themselves and they feel less than, diminished, lacking. It just raises all sorts of judgy comments from that negative voice inside your head. Learning to recognize that voice and get curious about what it's saying will help you release the painful aspects of these comparisons. So that sounded really simple and easy, huh? (laughs) How to do it. First, start getting curious about the responses in your body and your emotions. Like I asked you before the series of questions, I wanted you to pay attention to what what happened to you. So it's not uncommon for people to feel something, a a tightening in their gut or a heavy heavy feeling um, in their chest when something feels negative to them. Um, And then the reverse is also true, that you might feel more open and expansive when, when you come out on the right side of a judgment. So getting curious about the physical responses and the emotional responses can can tell us, are your responses indicating that you have an opinion that relates to value, to good and bad, to better or worse, to right or wrong? For anything that caused a response, ask, well, why did that provoke a response in me? What beliefs do I hold about this subject? Where did I learn these beliefs? Are they true? Are they valuable? Would I judge someone else for not measuring up here? And if not, why do I judge myself for not measuring up? When you're getting curious about these things, look at, you know, are your emotional responses being linked to safe versus unsafe judgments? In other words, do you think that you'll be safer, more accepted, better liked, more worthy if you fall on one side of the comparison than the other? For beliefs that are linked to an emotional response, ask yourself, who created that belief? Is it your own? Is this an idea that you created on your own? And often often it is not. Often it was created more by societal expectation or messages your parents gave you when you were younger related to achievement or health or activity. Emotions are a rapid response form of feedback. The vagal nerve runs from your brain down into your body. And the ratio of information coming from your body up to the brain versus the information coming down from your brain to the body is 10 to 1. In many ways, your brain is not the command center of your body. It's a response center. It's getting 10 times as much information coming in and then sending out a response. It's really helpful to know what your brain is responding to. So one of the best ways to explore hidden beliefs and find effective ways to reframe them is in conversation with a caring person. I really love helping clients with compare and despair, and I particularly love doing it as part of group work. It can be so eye-opening to hear other people share their own stories of comparison and uncover some of the hidden beliefs that have caused them to feel judged. It helps you to realize that we're all human, and while we'll always compare, there's really no need to despair. If you would like some help uncovering your hidden beliefs as part of a supportive community, the next Positive Changes small group coaching cohort is starting soon. And if you'd like to learn more about it, you can visit colleenpilar.com for more information. Thanks for listening to Unleashed at Work and Home. I invite you to come learn more at colleenpilar.com where you can be steady, be strong, and be long.